What's up traders, Sandra O'Connell with Pristine Capital coming at you with yet another market recap video. It is September 20th, 2021. Please go ahead, click the like button on this video. Subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this content. Today we're gonna talk about, oh my gosh, the crazy sell-off team. We're gonna talk about the price action, the indices. We're gonna talk about my positioning and my trades for today. Before we get into all that, quick risk disclaimer, nothing in this video should be construed as investment advice or recommendations. Please follow your own trading plan and your own risk parameters. Last but certainly not least, do not YOLO your entire account into any one of my trades. We have a ton to talk about. Let's dive in. All right, so we're gonna to try to go through this. 15 minutes or less would be clutch. All right, so indices. Box scores for today. S&P 500 is measured by the SPY, closed down 1.67%. NASDAQ QQQ finished down 2.17%. Big down day for the NASDAQ. IWM small caps finished down 2.38%. They were our biggest loser for the day. And the Dow Jones finished down 1.81%. Breadth was absolutely horrible. This was a complete washout day for all of the indices. Worst breadth was the Dow Jones dogs of the Dow with only 3% advancers. And then our NASDAQ QQQ had 5% advancers. So basically, you know, just a huge washout. All right, uh, let's take a look. We are going to check out our ES futures and it is six o'clock. I kind of wanted to record this while I could see the futures. Let's go, nice little green candle. So let's tell the story of what's going on here. <clears throat> so we have the Evergrande situation blowing up. Boom, headlines. This one guy, I uh, think like, European guy came out with a thread on Twitter over the weekend. Everyone got super scared. And then the Chinese, they were pretty much like the Asian markets were on a holiday today. So most of their markets were closed, which also kind of messes things up. Today was the day after a big quad witching options expiration day. And we spilled into the abyss team. Uh, so look at this. We had a huge red candle. We had a virgin point of control over here at about 4342. And we took that out cleanly and we even descended even lower than that. We almost got all the way down to this Venom pivot at 42.84. Are we oversold at this point? Absolutely. And let me illustrate that by going over here to our chart on FinViz. I've shown this a bit earlier to pristine capital members. But yeah, this is the S&P 500, the SPY ETF. I just throw on some Bollinger Bands, pretty simple. I have the two standard deviation band, the three standard deviation band, and the four standard deviation band. And what you'll see is that we actually tagged four standard deviations down. And if you're buying at that level, there's a ton of edge. So look look at prior sell-offs. This one barely even tagged two standard deviations down, two. This one got to three, didn't even get to two. This one got all the way to three and change. So yeah, you know, it's pretty unprecedented for a sell-off to get, you know, below four standard deviations down. Like you can see this one rode the two standard deviation band all the way down. Even during the COVID crash, this bottom band is our four standard deviation band. Were we really hitting that? No, we weren't. We got close to it one day. So yeah, I just think, you know, we were incredibly oversold. And during our weekend analysis, I talked about how, you know, I took some longs into the weekend, but as I was looking through my analysis, it looked a little bit dicey because we were not really seeing that big panic amongst market participants. So that's definitely something I'm going to carry forward in my trading. I added a couple longs on Friday and basically like overall, I was able to avoid the downside of this entire downtrend except for this final day. So yeah, today uh, my PL got hit, but that's all right in the grand scheme because yeah, you know, if you can avoid the majority of the downside, you're always going to have your down days. You know, I would have loved for this to have been like pretty much like a perfect sequence. That would have been awesome. And I think it really could have been. So yeah, definitely some learning lessons for me moving forward. But yeah, in terms of the action today, was I going to like stop out of my positions from Friday? No, because yeah, if we're down four standard deviations, that's where I want to be getting long, not, you know, taking my risk off. 
see I actually added a couple of positions today. I just think the risk reward from here, you know, even if just for a bounce, like look, we actually fell out of this downward trend channel. I think, you know, risk reward is pretty fantastic. Just another illustration of that. I think it's more important to go through this today because I know a lot of people probably, you know, their P and L's were getting hit. You know, people are probably taking stops today. I was not doing that, but uh, let's see. So this is our uh, weekly chart of the SPY ETF. This is another indication here. So this 20 week simple moving average, this pink line has been undefeated since the COVID crash. So for the COVID crash, we ripped right below that uh, 20 week simple moving average, literally on like the second week of the sell off. So it was just, you know, this really showed us, hey, this is no joke. What's going on over here? Here we're three weeks into the sell off. And what you'll notice that we undercut the 20 week simple moving average, but that's where we found support. So if I were to ask anyone, you know, to look at this chart, you know, with 2020 hindsight, ever since the COVID crash, where do you want to be buying your stocks? They would definitely say, you know, buy every time we hit this 20 week. But of course, when you're in the heat of the moment and you actually hit it, that's where no one wants to buy. Heat of the moment, heat of the moment, heat of the moment. Another example, the CNN fear and greed index. Once it gets to an extreme fear, you know, for most people, they would say, this is where you want to be buying your stocks. But in the heat of the moment, you don't because you get really scared. Another indication that I was watching throughout the entire day this is our CBOE exchange market statistics for Monday, September 20th. I wanted to see big fear in the markets. I wanted to see big put buying. And that's exactly what we got today. For the first, you know, this is the most put buying we've had in the past 11 days of this downtrend. So that's another nuance. A lot of people are acting as if this is day one of the downside, you know. Oh my gosh, this is day one. We're going to have a, a ton of downside ahead of us. Meanwhile, they don't realize this is day 11. This isn't day one. So yeah, put to call ratio was above a one the entire day. I love to see that in terms of a shakeout. That is the best. So let's go team. If I didn't see that, I would be like, like this is bad. So yeah, we had that. Another indication See, look, we're in the aftermarket. These things are probably going to go green, you know, very soon. I would imagine. I could be wrong, but that's definitely my bias. Uh, VIX. <clears throat> so look at the VIX. This VIX spike, even on Friday, I looked at this too into the weekend, and I was like, the way, the way that VIX closed, you know, it wasn't really a true VIX spike. It was just kind of like literally, a little, you know, from a technical perspective, like the VIX literally looked like it was on the verge of a breakout. And yeah, that's what we got today. So huge gap up in the VIX. I'm sure this caught almost everyone off guard, especially people that bought the dip on Friday, which is, you know, I bought the dip into the close as well. So I'm in that camp too. But this is actually a very legitimate VIX spike. We got all the way up to almost a 30. We were at 28 spot, 7.3. And the VIX closed well off the highs, team. So that's another example. Like at this point, we're just stacking edges. Now this is a really good uh, risk reward spot in the market. And yeah, I mean, you know, could the VIX go up to a 41? Absolutely. Last time it got there was for the coronavirus crash, though. So, you know, do I personally think this Evergrande thing is going to equate to another corona crash? No. And the reason why is because. You know, oh my gosh, what if the Chinese market crashes? The Chinese market newsflash it already crashed. <laughs> Look at this. So the Chinese market, uh, this is the FXI ETF. It's been in literally like a huge downtrend slash crash since February of 2021. So is this like some new thing? No, nah, this is actually an old thing. So yeah, I think... You know, trust me, anything can happen. I'm willing to change my mind, but I just think this was a good, you know, entry point. The other thing too is, you know, everybody's saying we haven't had a 5% correction in XYZ amount of time. That also spooked me a little bit. And, 
you know, of course now today, with today's move down, we got to that 5% correction. So even that is like, you know, removing some of the cobwebs, kind of like refreshing things, a nice healthy little shakeout, which is good. And then also with the VIX, this elevated, you know, just to go back to that. So another reason why I like the edge here is because for the VIX to be at a 25, that's implying really big moves in the market. We have huge volatility now baked into options prices. In order to sustain the VIX up at these levels, <clears throat> we need to have China like blow up tomorrow. Like we need to have like another shoe drop. And then we need to have like another shoe drop the next day. Like you really need to like keep the pressure on when the VIX is this elevated. It's very tough to sustain it up here. Okay, so <clears throat> that's that. We're about 10 minutes in. All right, five minutes left. Okay, Vin Finviz heat map. <clears throat> Red across the board. I'll tell you the one thing that I'm looking at the most. So for these summer sell-offs, pretty much throughout the summer, the vibe is small caps have been horrible performers. They've gone nowhere. What's been moving the market higher is the NASDAQ, is the technology stocks. Now we've actually had a dip in technology. So like Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Tesla, Facebook, all those, they've been like Teflon. Today they all got clipped very hard. You can see they're all down well over a percent. Tesla's down 3.86%. On Friday, it was the same exact story where these were all down 2%, 3%. So at this point in two days, we're looking at maybe like a five or 6% pullback in all of these FANG names. And these are the best companies in the United States. And we just got in two days, a little like, you know, five to 6% sale. So I'll be looking at these stocks uh, for a bounce because these are the best companies in the world. Yeah, the NASDAQ QQQ, take a look at this. This actually looks really ugly up here. You know, this really looks like distribution. Look at all the red candles that were up here. Uh, but we traverse the entire monthly value area. So let's see if we can get a bounce here and retest that 50 day moving average. Keep in mind, we have Jerome Powell speaking on Wednesday, potentially an upcoming taper. This is not me saying like, oh, we're going back to all time highs and then some. This is me saying in this moment right now, playing for a tactical bounce the risk reward, in my opinion, is pretty incredible. Really like as good as it gets. So yeah, you know, if we get like a 2% up day tomorrow or like a big 1% green day, VIX comes off of it. You know, it's not like I'm gonna be like, all right, now let's go to all time highs. Like I'm just taking this level by level and I'm looking for the bounce. All right, so that is our heat map. Sectors, complete bloodbath. So look, none of these sectors were spared. We had the ARC funds. Oh my gosh, they got destroyed down 4.41%. So 4%, that's a huge number team. That's saying like, you know, people were just sell it, sell it, sell it. I don't care what price I'm getting. Like get me out of this market today. So that's when I know there's, there's some panic in the streets. So yeah, you know, huge decreases across the board. I think days like today are where you have to do a lot more homework because this is where hey let's see what opportunities could be unearthed uh style factors same thing bloodbath across the board worst performing style factor was momentum down 2.66 percent best performing style factor was minval very defensive let's take a look at some of my trades for today let me pull these bad boys up so for stocks, no stock trades for today. And then I just put on a couple of options trades, some long positions. I got long some NVIDIA calls this morning. I took LVS. <clears throat> this is an interesting one. Oh, wow, we have 40 seconds left. All right, let's do this team. Our right, LVS. So these Chinese stocks, we they are the ones that are in the heart of this sell-off. You know, oh my gosh, China's blowing up. China's COVID is so bad. You know, whatever, China, China, China. LVS is literally at the heart of this and LVS has put in four consecutive green candles. So this stock's being accumulated while, while everyone's starting to get so loud on, oh my gosh, the world's blowing up. So I bought some calls in this today 
and we'll see what happens this literally looks like it's ripe for a bounce and then spy um, bought some of these calls uh what did i end up picking up the september 30th 432 calls for 695 so yeah that's me you know i don't just talk about the market and make like prognostications and like you know all that like i'm trading the market so like if i'm saying like yeah i think the risk reward is great for a bounce you know that means i'm positioned for that and you know i come on these videos every single day with you guys a lot of times i'm right when i'm wrong i'm wrong too so i put it all out there for everyone to see uh s p 500 yeah so uh, i got this when the spy was down maybe two percent on the day <clears throat> and yeah like i said I just really like the risk reward for a potential bounce here so yeah enter that we are 15 minutes 51 seconds in let's do our big tech options race and then we'll break for the day okay big tech boom today's combined flows let's see what we got it's buying the lead and keep in mind you know there's a ton of put buying today yeah look at that vxx so people are playing vol and I just think like if you were buying vol today, you are a scrub. Like literally, you're a scrub. Because with the VIX at 25, like your risk reward is just horrible. I mean, even if the VIX goes to a 40, buying it when it's at 25, that's like the worst risk reward trade. And mo for the most part, the people that were buying vol today, buying puts, they're essentially forced buyers. They're capitulating. And they now have to buy that protection when the VIX is so elevated. So that's the tough part. Uh, yeah, let's see if anything sticks out. So SPY, Tesla, Amazon, Qs. Nah, these are pretty much like the usual offenders that we have on here. Let's look at AVGO. That one rarely comes up. And then I'll bring up one stock that I'm really liking for tomorrow. AVGO, Broadcom. Yeah, this one looks interesting. You know, pulled back, dip buyers came in, closed right around the 20-day simple moving average. Let's take a look. So I think the best name from our weekend watch list is Datadog. Look at this. So pulled back to the 20-day moving average, and it's put, it put in a nice, beautiful green candle today, team. So Datadog really looks like a leader compared to, for instance, a lot of these names really just gave up the ghost. It's like Palantir was down big, MongoDB. Yeah, a lot of these. So yeah, I think uh, Data Dog looking very solid. That being said, that about does it for this market recap video. I'm gonna go for a run today. If you had a challenging day in the markets today, that's okay. You know, I had a challenging day in the markets as well. You know, it's never a good feeling if you're a position long and then you know the market goes down, whatever. But keep in mind, you know, in the markets, there's gonna be times when you're long and the market goes down. That's literally a feature of the market, the volatility. So it's important to just, you know, like I talked about the day when I had like a crazy winner, I believe it was September 1st, I was saying, you know, this is one of my best trading days ever. I need to make sure I'm staying in the center because if you're going to get euphoric on your good days, that means you're going to be down in the dumps on your bad days. Here, you know... I certainly didn't want to be long anything today you know that's if you came into today flat you know congratulations that's you know really good on you you really nailed it i did not come in flat but am i going to be like oh my gosh like let me just like cry into my soup today or like scream into my pillow no on a day like today you want to make sure that you're staying in the center that way you can always think about you know what's the next best decision that i can make so I'm going to leave you guys with that. Have a great night, everyone. I'll see you all tomorrow.